Hello, my name is Rico Cortez, and I'm from Wisdom and Tom Ministries. And in this session, I want to cover a very interesting topic that I think many of us sometimes disregard in the honor and shame principles, which is the Day of Atonement, Yom HaKippurim. Many of us, when we read the first century writings, we sometimes look at the book of Hebrews and we try to struggle with the understanding and, you know, and trying to look more into what is the message behind of Messiah being the high priest and why is it that he is describing so much. The writer of the book of Hebrews, or the letter or the sermon of Hebrews, is describing you know, such a intricate services of the temple. When you look into the temple service, you really get a greater insight of the message that the writer is conveying to the audience. The book of Hebrews was written out of Italy. It, it happened during the time where the chaos of the temple in Jerusalem was about to be you know, unleashed by the Romans and destroyed. The temple was going to be destroyed. In the ancient world, a temple represented the identity, the representing of their gods, uh, the center of everything in life. The destruction of the temple to the Israelites would have been devastating because then they had no connection between their God and their people, no mediator, no relationship. It would have been shameful on so many other levels. The writer of the Hebrews is writing a very interesting comfort letter to the people proposing that the Father becomes their patron, the Messiah Yeshua becomes their mediator and their broker, and it begins to outline for them how Messiah is going to continue that mediation between Israel and the Creator, even though there's not a literal temple. Because of something that happened in the book of Exodus in which the, mod, the earthly tabernacle is a copy of the heavenly tabernacle. Thus, it required also a, sacri uh, a Kohen Hagadol or a high priest, as we say in Hebrew. But what's really interesting is narrowing down, narrowing down the essence of chapters 9 of Hebrews. What day of atonement is it talking about? And there's a word in Hebrews chapters 9 22 that it says remission in almost every Bible translation. It says remission of sins. But the word sins does not appear in the Greek. And the word ephesus means from the Septuagint to the Hebrew, it means yovel, which means jubilee. Now, it's really interesting because it's narrowing down not just any day of atonement in which you have community atonement, national atonement, forgiveness, but now it's talking about the day of freedom of Jubilee, which happens every 50, year, 50 years. So the message of the Jubilee is this, and the message of Messiah is this, that the Father has provided still, even though the destruction of the temple is approaching, he has, a pro, he has extended righteousness and justice through the Messiah as our high priest and our broker, not just to give us just a yearly freedom, or in this case, yearly forgiveness, but connecting it with the righteousness and justice that a newly enthroned king will do when he will be enthroned, which is setting home the captives, delivering the people, providing for the less fortunate, and that requires a release. So the word there in Hebrews 9.22 deals with the Hebrew word, uh, the, the Greek word, Ephesus, which means to, in Hebrew, Yovel, which is jubilee or release. Very important because now Messiah release us, gives us that eternal freedom that we're going to have a gift, which is eternal life, so that we can become the people of the covenant, taking the gospel to the nations with no guilt, knowing that we're truly free. And no matter what happens, even if we die, he will resurrect us so we can have eternal life. I hope you join us and, uh, and you enjoy the topic.